When we look at the effects of over breathing, which of course is going to include one of the traits would be mouth breathing, the effects are varied. So it can affect the cardiovascular system. If we breathe too much, our heart rate increases. We can have palpitations, missed beats, tachycardia, um, chest pain, cold extremities, rain odds, blotchy flushing of the blush area and capillary vasoconstriction. So when we breathe too much, it can cause a reduction of the amount of blood flow and oxygen to the brain. And this may help to explain that why people get heart attack from stress. Stress makes us breathe too much. Um, why people get poor, get poor cardiovascular health and high blood pressure, you know, from stress. Breathing too much, blood vessels constrict, and for the heart then um, to distribute blood throughout the body, it has to raise the pressure. The effect it has on the brain, neurological, dizziness, instability, faint feelings, but rarely fainting, headache and paresthesia. Paresthesia would be numbness and pins and needle or a feeling of uselessness or heaviness. And I have used it with quite a number of these symptoms, including paresthesia, that by changing the individual's breathing, we were able to reduce their symptoms quite significantly. So hyperventilation, including mouth breathing, it also affects the respiratory system um, because if we're breathing too much, it's literally causing the airways, the lower airways can constrict, but it's also causing drying and dehydration of the upper airways. And when the lower airways constrict, we feel we're not getting enough breath, so that contributes to shortness of breath. Um, dryness of the upper airways and sensitivity of the upper airways caused by overbreathing, causing irritable cough. Tightness or oppression of the chest, air hunger, you know, the feeling that we're not getting enough air. Because ironically, the individual who's breathing too much feels that they're not getting enough air um, because they're constantly looking for more and more air. The inability to take a deep breath, they feel that they don't take a satisfying breath. Excessive sighing. Um, usually when I see an individual and I, I always pay attention to their breathing, including whether they sigh. You know, when this, once I see a sigh, we always work to address that because if I don't address the sigh, I won't address our hyperventilation because all it takes is one sigh every few minutes to maintain the habit of overbreathing. Excessive yawning. Um, I was constantly tired when I was younger. Having my mouth open, I disrupted sleep, waking up exhausted, and of course then I would be yawning frequently throughout the day. That's a normal, typical feature of somebody who is over-breathing and sniffing. Sniffing because of course runny nose. Now I'm not saying that every individual will have every one of these symptoms because the effect that hyperventilation has depends on genetic predisposition. Some people will have nothing and some people will have many and some people may have one or two. So it affects every person and every system differently. Hyperventilation, it also affects the gastrointestinal tract, including the following symptoms, such as difficulty in swallowing, globus, which is having a lump in one's throat, um, mouth breathing, of course, is going to be synonymous with drying out the mouth, drying out the throat, drying out the airways, acid regurgitation, heartburn, flatulence, belching, air swallowing, um, because, of course, through mouth breathing, we're constantly looking for breath, so we often swallow air into the stomach, which will be causing bloating and abdominal discomfort. In general, it contributes to weakness, exhaustion, impaired concentration, impaired memory and performance, disturbed sleep, including nightmares and emotional sweating. And this list has been taken from the book written by Timmins and Lee, and it's called Behavioral and Psychological Approaches to Breathing Disorders. And written in that book, is mentioning cardiologist, the late cardiologist, Dr. Claude Lom, because we know that chronic hyperventilation, it affects quite a large amount of the population, but it hasn't got the attention that it's deserved. And according to Claude Lom, hyperventilation, it fell between the two stools of medicine and psychiatry. And probably another reason that hyperventilation hadn't been fully recognized is that when most clients, they weren't taught how to change their breathing. Um, that you couldn't demonstrate the effect of hyperventilation when you weren't actually using that as a tool to induce change. So really to understand more about the whole role of hyperventilation, we need to be teaching our clients about the importance of functional breathing because then that gives us um, 
the feedback and the observations that we need to take this further. So effective breathing retraining is required to demonstrate conclusively that hyperventilation is the cause of the client's symptoms. And sometimes these patients report symptoms in more than one system and as a result they're often labelled as hypochondriacs. And historically they're often told to relax and to take a few deep breaths, the very thing that we're telling them try and avoid.